we can't presume that a lot of the population we're seeking to reach actually has mobile connectivity, let alone access to the internet. So we've all heard about the large number of mobile handsets globally. There are over 7 billion uh, SIM cards uh, and registrations, but that doesn't really tell us the number of unique subscribers because many households have multiple SIM cards. And it masks the very important access agenda. So if we want to reach those li people living on less than $2 a day to achieve UN Global Goal 4, we really have to accelerate connectivity. And that's where the opportunity work between industry and governments comes in. There are four major barriers we've done in study <clears throat> to understand why uh, mobile penetration hasn't gone to the extent that we had hoped in perhaps sub-Saharan Africa, where there's less than perhaps 50% coverage sometimes. Um, or penetration, rather. And that's four barriers. The first is uh, coverage, so we need to deploy more technology and infrastructure to areas that are remote. Secondly is affordability, and that means uh, achieving economies of scale, governments and industry coming together to drive down the cost. <clears throat> and then uh, two other ones are related to education. First is digital literacy. So many people may have access to a phone, but they don't know how to use it. They don't know how to navigate the menu. They don't know how to call their son. Uh, they might be illiterate. They are just actually interested in learning how to become literate because they want to text message their, their son, uh, a mother in rural Africa. We've heard the story. Um, and so digital literacy is key. And then the final point is People want access to local content that's relevant to them and for learning opportunities. We did a study with MasterCard Foundation and found in Sub-Saharan Africa that African youth really want to access mobile to get educational content that will help them find jobs naturally. And so uh, educational content is, I think, a very important opportunity for private-public partnerships where the mobile industry can uh, take the content and distribute it. There's a great example in the Philippines where there's been a partnership between the Filipino government and the mobile operators to take the content, uh, bring it at a subsidized rate uh, to uh, in populations in the islands and the remote areas, and then they take part of it and they monetize it and commercialize it for other populations. I'm very excited to say that at our Mobile World Congress in Barcelona 2016, uh, which we hosted at the end of February, uh, the mobile industry came together and declared its unanimous support for the UN 17 Global Goals. And that's very exciting. I think that the operator community realizes that the mobile platform is a gateway to achieving so many of these global goals. And I think the UN community and civil society and governments realize the same. So I would like us to advance the goal by think, uh, the, the, the agenda by really thinking about those outcomes. How do we reach these top goals of you know, ending poverty everywhere, um, giving people access to, to health care and, and education opportunities? And I would go circle back to my first point, which is to say that the starting point is we have to get everyone access to quality uh, uh, opportunities to access the internet. And we only have 40% uh, access to the internet today globally, and we're expected by 2020 for that to go up to 60%. And we've also, according to our studies, most people in developing countries will access the internet first through their mobile phones. So we definitely need to focus on that. But there is a win-win proposition with the educational agenda, which is, as I said at the beginning, that not only do we have these technological and commercial challenges, but we have the educational challenges of people not knowing how to use mobile phones, how to use the internet. And so if we're able to demonstrate that, and, and, and I think mobile companies are very motivated to help through digital literacy programs, we actually create more demand. And and then finally, there's an opportunity for the rich content we have globally. How do educational content, how do we digitize it, how do we get it so that uh, it creates an economic opportunity for people to get online and to, to learn more.